record the room. Um, is everyone okay with me recording the room? Richard, Jackie, Joe, just put a thumbs up if you're okay. Hello everyone, I'm okay. Okay, hi Joe. Hi, hi. It's a pleasure. Hello Thank Jackie. You. Hello Angela. How are you? Fine, and how are you? I'm okay. It's been ages. How have you been? How's Uganda? What's going on? <laughs> ah, Uganda is fine. I was enjoying the roller coaster of activities. A roller coaster of activities is right. So who here has been a CA this time? I've been one. Ooh. ooh. Okay, okay. What did you learn? Um, I don't know, shall we do introductions or should we get right into it? My name is Angela. <laughs> I'm a member of the Catalyst community. I am a coder and a developer. I am a Plutus pioneer and as well as an Atala Prism pioneer. I'm a proposer, I'm a CA, I'm a VCA. I am a general hanger about of these streets. And so uh, if you would like to ask me any questions, I will be your host for today. And thank you so much for joining. Um, would anyone else like to introduce themselves and let us know who you are and where you're from? Oh, I'm from Nairobi, Kenya. Yeah? Uh, Richard, hi. You're, you're muted. There you Unfortunately, can't we can't hear you. Okay, Jackie. Yes, I'm Jackie. I'm let's give Richard a minute and uh, let's see if, who else is around, yeah? How are you, Jackie? I'm fine, Angela. I'm happy to meet you all guys on this platform. Like I've said, I'm Jackie. I'm from Uganda. Um, I joined this ecosystem, I think about two weeks, two weeks back. I'm finding this uh, community so interesting because there is a lot to learn. I've learned quite a lot in my entire life. I've never been a, a CA. I've never been, I've never um, assessed any proposals, but I gave myself a chance to participate and I learned quite a lot of things. So uh, the process of learning itself is exciting. And uh, I also co, uh, I was a co-proposer, okay? So I really stretched myself to try a lot of new things. And so far so good, I feel I'm, I'm, I'm elevating myself and that is good enough for me. I believe when I hang in this and, and, and continue to follow and learn, I will help my community in a big way. Thank you. You absolutely will. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, Richard, are you back? Seems that no? you have some connection issues. Yeah. I can't see his screen frozen. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, Joe, Mr. Gidinji, hello. Hi, Angela. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks, everyone. I'm glad to be here to join you. Uh, just looking to learn about the proposals and everything about Cardano. So I'm glad to be here and thanks. Thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you, Joe. Thank you so much. Uh, Anne, how are you? Hi, I'm fine. Today seems to be a bit of an issue with connectivity or breakouts or something. I'm not sure what's going on, but uh, we're here. Yeah, so sorry, I kind of missed um, what the question was. It's just a greeting. Just um, introduce yourself. Have you been a CA? Are you a proposer? Where are you at with the whole thing? Uh, yeah, okay. So I'm Anne. Um, I have, I'm happy to see Jackie here. I'm happy to see Richard. I don't know where, I'm happy to see Kelly. Um, I invited Richard and Kelly and um, Jackie and Richard and Kelly actually got to CA. 
to do some, um, and I believe that the CA process is uh, the best way to start learning this um, whole Kadano community and giving kudos and working with the, with the, with the, with the, with the system. So Joe, I would invite Joe. I also invited Joe. Joe is, um, Joe, are you on the Plutus Pioneer program yet? Have you managed to get into that? Joe is a, is a, is a computer scientist and um, he is my partner. We work together a lot, builds websites. He's great, very innovative and creative. So I look forward to Joe becoming much more involved in this and uh, doing more. Yeah, so as we grow the East African community. So I have put in about 10 proposals this time around <laughs> and C8 quite a few. So it's been quite a round of work, but I find it very fascinating, interesting. And I keep saying Africa is where the problems to be solved are. So if we can become more active about solving our own problems and just using a platform like this, we may go very far in uh, figuring out our own issues and solving our own problems in our own way. So I like this process and uh, thank you very much, Angela, for giving us the opportunity to come. During a time when we are awake, thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Felix, would you like to introduce yourself? How are you? Hello, I'm Felix, 29 years old, from France. And it's more than one year I work full-time in Catalyst, founded several projects like the Catalyst One, Catalyst School, the Ambassadors Guild, next to Dino, Cardano Ambassadors as well and work a lot in the governance process of Project Catalyst and Cardano at Genova. And extremely happy to help and to see new people coming and building the future of our ecosystem. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here, Felix. Uh, Kelly Muhindi, you're new. How, how, how are you? Um, please introduce yourself. Are you able to talk? Can't hear him. Hi, we can't hear you. Are you speaking? You're unmuted, but we can't hear you. We can give you a minute. Um, Edwin, hi. Yeah. Everyone's just giving Hello. a short introduction. Hello. I'm Edwin. I'm from Singapore. Uh, this is my uh, third town hall. Um, the first two was uh, were the Pacific town hall. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Kelly, how, um, are you there? We can give you a minute. So thank you so much for being here today, everyone. Um, I'm so glad to have you. I hey. oh, appreciate. Hey, oh, hi, hear Kelly. You? We can hear uh, you now. Sorry, sorry. I, yeah, I was just sorting out a few mic issues, and uh, I'm, hopefully, I'm loud and clear now. Um, I'm here to sort out my camera, so I'll do that. But yeah, so my name is Kelly Windy um, uh, from Nairobi, Kenya. Um, I've been in Kadano for a while since 2019, but uh, primarily on the you know the, the development side of things. I joined Twitter's Pioneers Cohort One. Unfortunately, I didn't. Um, managed to go through, uh, but now working through three, I'm also on the Imago um, uh, 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 lessons or uh, lectures. Uh, so uh, I've been voting on the Catalyst project for a while, I think since fund uh, four or five, but I've never actively you know, um, contributed in this capacity. So uh, Anne introduced me to this yesterday and I'm hopefully I'll be more active on it. Thanks. Welcome, welcome. So the deal with Eastern Town Hall is that we meet every two weeks at 9 a.m. UTC. <laughs> um, and you're all welcome. It's the same link you've used to join and we will be back uh, on 
the 9th of, of April is our next meeting. Uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, so today I just wanted to go through what we've been, um, our little clock that you may have seen on the side there. Uh, everyone who's a proposer has proposed. Um, we've been through the- CFA. Sorry, Angela, Richard is back. Maybe you can introduce himself. Richard is back. Hi, Richard. Would you like to introduce yourself? You're on mute, you're on mute. Okay, if you have a, if you have a min If you're able to, you can also introduce yourself in the chat. So, um, we have proposed, we have finalized the proposals, the proposals have been uh, marked or they've been through the community. Oh gosh, assessor or advisor? <laughs> advisor program. Advisor. <laughs> wow. Um, and we will be flagging them in the next uh, few days between now and Monday. Uh, so anyone who has a proposal up, this is the stage where you get to go through all of the CA's work and see if anything uh, unsettles you and you have the opportunity to write an essay about why and put up a flag. And from next week, we'll go into the VCA program where um, the VCA's will mark the level of CA work and determine who has done an excellent job, who's done a good job, and who has not done a very good job at all. Um, from the sixth, is it the sixth, Felix? When we go into, on the sixth, we will have um, the snapshot. And so today we're going to be able to have uh, the opportunity to guide you through what do you need to do in order to become a voter? And if you, uh, if you manage, then that will there'll be a snapshot here on the sixth, and then we go into the voting process, which lasts until when, Felix? Voting process? Yes. Uh, let me let me open the stuff. I don't have the voting process <laughs> is from the beginning to April, um, and then we should get the results of the voting process by May fifth. Okay, April 14th. Exactly. April 14th, the voting ends. And then the voting we will- The voting start. Uh, the voting April start, 14th? exactly. The 14th. And <laughs> then voting normally is open around 10 days, something like this. 10 days. And then the voting results, when they are really fully tallied and casted, this is May, I think in the beginning of May that we have the results then of the fund, fund aid proposals. And then we do it all again and we go into fund nine, <laughs> right? So uh, let's just do a quick tally. How many people are proposers in the room? Proposers, proposers, put your hands up. Okay, how many people are CAs? Okay, how many people are eligible to be a VCA? Okay, how many people are interested- what is the criteria of becoming a VCA? That you've been a CA in a previous fund. No, the rule has changed a little bit. You have to be a community, you have to be a successful community advisor over minimum two funding rounds, but not three funding rounds as community advisor or one funding round as community advisor and a funding round as veteran community advisor. This makes you eligible to be a veteran community advisor for fund aid. Thanks. Um, who's interested in becoming a voter or who is a voter? What is the criteria first? So Voters? let's just go through it in order, yeah? Do you mind if we just go through it in order? So what's been your experience being a CA? A ton of people have been CAs for the first time, right? Would anyone like to walk us through what it's been like being a community advisor? I can start. 
first of Thanks, all, Thanks, Jackie. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, to look at the ideas, new ideas from people, and appreciate their thinking and idealization. And secondly, it um, we were given a guide to follow. I see a, so we, we had a marking kind of uh, guide guideline. You, you know, you, you had something to follow that you did not need to have an experience. All you needed is to understand the guidelines and follow them. So after understanding the guidelines, you look at these proposals and see, do they meet the quality required by the community? And then you, 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 would, you would assess and give your, your, how do I call it? Your, your feel about them, either to say, I, I agree, I disagree. And then you also explain why you think you agree or disagree. Uh, it was a good experience because uh, for many proposals I, 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 I worked on, I didn't have much knowledge about them, but I just I was just guided by the guidelines and it was um, a good experience for me. I learned quite a lot. Awesome, Jackie, that's so cool. Um, who else was a community advisor this time? Felix, how, how was your experience? Did you actually assess her? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> did you actually manage to mark anything this time? <laughs> yes, each funding round. I'm, I'm community advisor since fund four, I think. But yeah, And uh, I was really happy because before the proposals, the proposal structure was a little bit, you could write your proposal almost however you want it. And now in this funding round, we change the proposal structure. So the proposals have to provide impact, feasibility, auditability, and own boxes, which makes it for community advisors much more easy to assess proposals, I think. So you don't have to fish or to look in the proposal, ah, where's the impact, where's the feasibility, where's the auditability? Now it's clear outlined. And I think for the community advisors, it's a much easier job now to assess proposals. Awesome. I would agree with Felix. I would agree with Felix because last time I was a community advisor in Fund Seven, and it was um, just one blank sort of um, open ended, and you had to kind of look for the feasibility or look for the for the you had to find it yourself. But now it's properly structured. And something else I really appreciated was being asked the question, the general question about the capability of the team. Um, it was so much easier to see that capability of the team at the beginning, because before you had to go in, find the LinkedIn's, find their all their profiles. But now the, the capability of the team is established at the beginning. So I must say that the CA tool has really improved and I look forward to further improvements of the CA tool. Very helpful. And I was able to then guide Richard and Jackie easily because they could they could align it um, very different from last time. Last time I was, I think I got a very low rating, even though I sort of got through as a community advisor, but my rating was not that great because I had to figure out from the proposal. But I think I'm expecting a better rating of my, of my assessment this time around. Cool. Edwin, do you have any uh, experience with the CA life? Uh, not for this round. I was asked by Melody to, uh, to have a look uh, but um, I think I will become the CA next next month, maybe. I'll see, because right now I'm kind of busy with uh, NFT artwork. I just completed the reviewing all eight assessments for my proposal. And um, I have to say, out of eight proposals, that's why out of eight assessments, I flagged three. And the, the first one I flagged was, um, uh, it was, if, if you ask me, it was set up uh, by someone with a malicious intent to, to sabotage my proposal. In other words, it's there to cyber uh, The second one was of uh, uh, low effort. That means uh, not much information. Uh, the third one was totally nonsense, totally no relevance of, of, at all uh, for, from if you read you you understand what, what why why is it so because it it makes the assessment makes no sense 
So yeah, so I I, I finish. Uh, I download the file. I submitted the Google form. Yeah. But I, I will ask uh, the, the veteran community advisors again, maybe sometime during the uh, at the town hall. Um, yeah, that's all they know, yes. So everyone who's a proposer has the opportunity to review the CA work. And just as Edwin is saying, flag any, any uh, reviews that seem uh, as you're saying, possibly malicious or just uninformed, or if you see that someone has not read your proposal and yet is giving you a low mark, you can just um, report it. So that's the that's that's um, the stage we're in now. Who would like to discuss where they're at with their proposals? Richard has a comment. He says, my experience as a CA has been very enriching. Reading through many amazing proposals has allowed me to have a feel for the requirements of the different challenges and how to structure a proposal in the future. Um, cool, Richard. Awesome. Um, so would anyone like to speak about some of their proposals? Just a short um, problem statement, solution statement, and leave us the link in, in the chat. Proposers, are you out there? Okay. Um, <laughs> I should. I should. Give I you have so many proposals, and I'm not sure which one to go for. But um, the one that quickly comes to mind is one that I did in nation building DAPS um, about curbing crime, curb crime using data. We have a real issue here within our country, and I think it also escalates to countries like maybe Indonesia, I don't know, where they have a lot of motorcycles that are used for public transport. And in Kenya, they, they, it was given as um, almost like a, a free, um, non, a tax free, you could buy a motorcycle tax free. Um, about uh, 10 years ago. And so there was a proliferation of motorbikes. So, so many motorbikes came into the market and people were carrying, pa ferrying passengers with them. And now the issue has come up that the government does not have a regulated way of uh, dealing with them. They have not, it has grown bigger than the regulation. And so the government does not have a regulatory framework. And therefore these motorbikes are now being used to commit crimes. So my suggestion is that we, um, have a way, maybe through a Tala prism, um, to capture the data of these motorbike riders who are about 2 million in Kenya, collecting about 20 million shillings, which is a $200,000 a day. That is a $200,000 a day um, turn turnaround. So it's quite significant to the economy, but at the same time, there's some rogues who have come into the system. So a vetting system, a way in which the motorbike riders can be vetted and the riders can know, um, the, the ones who's riding knows that this is a vetted motorbike. Every motorbike that is around is vetted. So the driver and the motorbike are, are, are assigned together and an identity is given to them for their area. And so all that data, if it's been collected, it can be collected. It would be very interesting to capture. And I'm sure this moves to other countries as well in the region because um, it's, it, in entries where it's difficult to, to permit where there are no roads, the motorbikes are very, they are very useful to get to places that are kind of roadless. And so they, it, it's a useful service, but it does need to be, um, cap the data about it needs to be captured and um, the, the, the vetting needs to happen. So my proposal is really just about, um, just a research around what these motorbikes are, where they are, how they go about their work, and just getting some data and some information about them. So that's my nation building one. Yeah, um, last fund, I also want a proposal on African stories. So I'd like to scale that one up for um, the African storybook to go into a digital library. Um, and that can also be aligned to the, to the blockchain. 
Yeah, so I have 10. So I, I will hijack this meeting if I start talking about all my proposals. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for keeping it short and succinct. Um, and yet we know exactly what you're talking about. Um, who else is a proposer and who would like to do a quick shout out? Oh, please leave your, your link in the chat so that we can all go and give your kudos. Hopefully. Is anyone else a proposer? Yeah, I'm hoping to do that. I'm trying to do that, but I'm also wanting to ask a question about the SDG tool. The SDG tool, I found it very nice um, and very useful, but I'm not sure how, how that tool, is it, is it going to be, um, is, is it going to affect, because I used it and I used it well, but there was nowhere where we needed to, as, 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 um, assessors, there's no uh, advisors, there's no way where we needed to indicate that we had used it. So I'm wondering what was the purpose of that tool coming on to oh, no. uh, idea scale? It's it's very, very good tool though. The for SDG now, tool. For now the SDG ratings, the sustainable development goals, what we are speaking about in this regard. Yeah. It doesn't affect your proposal directly now. What we do is mostly to see already, okay, how many proposals use the SDG tool, for example, which are which apply already to it. And in future funding rounds, it will okay. definitely affect the, uh, affect the proposals. So that it will, you okay. can see right now, it's it's not mandatory, the box on, on idea scale. In the future, yeah. this might change into obligatory box and uh, proposals have to provide SDG criteria to their proposal. Awesome. I really liked the tool. I enjoyed using it and I enjoyed um, learning about SDGs and how what I was thinking is relating to. So like the proposal that I've just talked about is relating to huh, the, the, the international right to safety, international rights to safe being safe. And so that's what, it, that's what it's going for. And it's also going for the SDG for um, training, so SDG for education, because one of the big issues that has come up with our motorbike riders is that they do not know, um, they don't have education, they're not well trained in, in the work. So, so frameworks are being asked for by the government for them and working with the police for this information to come to them so that they know the rules, the regulations, and also for the public to know how to deal with them. Because in the case where we had that uh, incident, the lady tried to run away because she was mobbed by the by the okay. by the bike riders, and it was a very very big concern. Sorry, yeah. Edwin, what's your proposal? Your problem statement? Your uh, answer to the problem in a brief form, please. Yeah, put the link. Uh, wait, give me a second. Um, basically, uh. The problem statement is uh, the, the the idea of that the metaverse is is um, is not exactly uh, how should I put it? It can be sometimes lonely and boring because it doesn't give you a meaningful user experience. And furthermore, metaverse sometimes they 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 are, they have events, but the events are based on a specific time period, say between certain days and another or between several days. And that if you log into a metaverse and uh, without uh, participating in any event, that you might actually find yourself being rather lonely. And uh, that's what I found out when I when I logged into the central land. Uh, that was uh, last year. So basically, I uh, propose uh, a different a different type of virtual world that is not that has not been explored uh, in the blockchain space. It has been explored in the, uh, in the traditional um, indie games uh, uh, sector. That means that this is actually what we call a living world. That means that. Uh, Okay, first of all, the living world is based on a concept developed by uh, Bart Stewart back in 2009. Uh, his blog article is, is the, the link is found in the proposal. You can, you can read it if you want. It's on gamedeveloper.com. So basically, he explains 
that um, he, he, he has this vision that you can play a single player game uh, using uh, a persistent uh, in, in a persistent virtual world. That means that the persistent virtual world is, is commonplace that you can find it in games such as uh, World of Warcraft, in the past, uh, Warhammer Online, these are massively uh, multiplayer online uh, role playing games. So, his idea is that you can uh, play a single player game, but you use a persistent virtual world uh, as, the, as, as the back end. So, uh, therefore, you will have to have, uh, uh, it, it will give you uh, a different level of user experience. Thinking. For example, there will be simulation. There will be storytelling, and that you don't have this problem whereby, uh, in 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 let's say World of Warcraft and Warhammer Online, um, I experienced cyberbullying, harassment, even in such online games. So single player games are um, they give you um, they, they can provide you with um, uh, a deep uh, storytelling. Uh, and this is uh, being developed from the side of the developer. So that means that. Um, so if um, how uh, so the, the difference between the because the difference between games such as World of Warcraft and classic uh, role playing games such as Power of State is in the the level of the way the way the story time was told. Because in classic role playing games they were told. Uh, they, they have um, fantastic epic storylines with, with very deep plots and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of narrative information but when you go to massively both uh, online role playing games you'll find that the, the amount of storytelling is not as much so so his vision was to figure out a solution where you can play a single player game with uh, deep storytelling but you use the back end. The back end is a persistent virtual world. So my my proposal is an adaptation of his solution to use the Cardano blockchain. And basically, you have uh, you have the fungible token, which is commonly used for uh, to uh, for uh, play to earn mechanics, and you have uh, non fungible tokens, which NFT. Um, NFTs can be used as a form of uh, authentication into the game server, so you know who is an investor, who is not. You can use uh, NFTs as a form of reward, me meaning to say that if a particular uh, player has completed the storyline, then you can reward the, the player with the NFT. And, the, and that new NFT uh, can be used as a prerequisite for priority access to uh, subsequent subsequent storylines, yeah. So that's basically, and I'm not sure what I'm trying to do. Wow. So I so you're basically aiming much more on the metaverse experience. Trying to um, drastically improve the metaverse experience using the concept of the world. You'll need quite an interesting UX person to make that happen, eh? <laughs> At the moment, uh, the project is, uh, is right now. I, I don't have a, I don't have a team because I, I did mention the proposal that this company is a solo project, and so the the plan is to build up the treasury first, and then we we have to uh, understand and recognize all the government regulations regarding cryptocurrency, how you use cryptocurrency, can you do payment or, and how, what are, where's the taxation, is it capital gain? Because in Singapore, our capital gains is 0%, no, no tax on capital gain, but we do have a corporate tax of 17%. So we, and uh, recently, uh, recently the, the, the Ministry of Finance just announced that they, they want to uh, analyze how to, uh, uh, have uh, they want to implement income taxation for the transactions of NFTs? Uh, because probably there are there are some uh, high profile of maybe some some people actually probably they made a lot of money from this transaction, so they want to see how to tax them. So we have to settle this as well. 
And then after that, then we can start to uh, uh, decide how should we actually uh, form a team? Uh, how should we go about doing the collaboration? Maybe some people want to work on the project, but then uh, we have to see whether do we have the capability to actually compensate them. Understood. I, I love to ask this question. Edwin, what happens to your project if you will not get funded? Um, uh, here's the thing. I did mention that I am working on uh, NFT artworks uh, for uh, JPEG Store. Uh, I actually got into the inaugural, uh, first, which is the first call for JPEG Store's uh, launch pad. Uh, but they actually asked me to postpone my uh, my my launch uh, because they want me to uh, work on uh, on a PFP project. So I'm currently working on a PFP project right now. I'm in like sixty five hours done for my tar for a target of one thousand hours. So I'm waiting to see if I can get into the second core and when the second core will be launched. So even if let's say let's say if I don't I don't get uh, I don't get good enough votes to get funded for 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 this proposal. I can actually still really I can actually still build my treasury from the NFT out from the sale proceeds of the NFT out. Jackie, 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 Jackie. <laughs> uh, I hear you have a proposal regarding coffee. Are you there? Yes, I'm here, but my network is is not um, treating me well. I'm on and off. I I think you have realized so. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, uh, I was a co proposer. Um, about a project on coffee in East Africa. And uh, my real role in, in, in the co-proposing was um, explaining the problems we face as farmers of coffee in East Africa, because I'm a farmer. And um, yeah, the major problems are um, in my country, uh, we don't have cooperatives. So meaning that every farmer is for themselves. We face a lot of land fragmentation and farms are disappearing. The young ones seem not to really understand the concept of farming because there is no money coming in out from there. So they look for other income sources, meaning that the farms suffer. So if we don't do something about it, that means the future of coffee in Africa or East Africa would, 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 would die completely. Then also realize that uh, we are using a, lo a lot of spraying uh, in the farms because that is the, um, it's the cheapest way of getting rid of the weed and all that and the, uh, and the pests. But in, in, in future, I believe that the spraying has uh, an effect, a bad effect on the soils and the quality of coffee, meaning that if we are going to um, look at coffee in a bigger way in the future, or if you are looking at the marketability and the, the, the uh, quality of coffee, then we must find a solution to um, either alkanize the soil or something to improve the quality of, uh, of the coffee. And then to also uh, find means of helping the farmer make money off their coffee, because it's, it's clear that uh, it's middlemen and other and, and, and users that benefit from the coffee itself. So in my region, people take coffee as a cash, a cash cow. And in the event that the, the, the cow does not give any cash, that means the morale and everything dies out. But yes, we are farmers, but we don't drink coffee. <laughs> That's another <laughs> another reason to help you understand that once the passion, once we don't see the money, the future of coffee definitely will die out. So I was I just helped to, to air out the, the challenges we, we face as farmers on the ground and then see how best this uh, ecosystem can come and help the farmers and uh, to really uh, take farming on a technological level because technology is the way to go. We also need to be relevant in the season. 
So that is all I can say about it. I've put a link to how we went about uh, challenging of uh, solving that problem into the description. Um, uh, Kelly and Richard, are you proposers? No, I'm not a proposer. Cool, Felix. How many proposals did you put out this time? Uh, a bunch, but it's not me. It's mostly teams, right? Very often I coordinate all those teams and whatnot. But uh, I think that the uh, the only one who I really would like to maybe uh, to to speak a second about is a challenge proposal which we submitted because. Um, as proposer in the ecosystem, you submit your proposals in specific challenges, right? For example, Edwin, your proposal might be in the Gamers on Chain challenge, for example, which I created. Also, hey. <laughs> so, and the beautiful way is that the community, you are able to submit proposals, but you're also able to submit challenge proposals. For example, Edwin, the Gamers on Chain challenge in which you submitted your proposal, this was submitted already two funding rounds around uh, before, the very first time. And the beautiful thing here as a proposal is you submit a challenge proposal, you say which topic is really important for the ecosystem, you allocate a budget to it, you say, oh, okay, how much budget do I think makes sense for this? And then it passes exactly the same way like a normal proposal as well. Then you, the people will vote on it. And those are the challenges which then take place in the next funding round. So this is something I think really important to mention as well. In Catalyst, we do not only submit proposals and challenges, we also define the challenges by ourselves. Which means, for example, in this funding round, we had $16 million. And the $16 million, we, the community decides how do we want to spend them. This in depth and integrations, this gamers on chain, this Crow Africa, Crow East Asia, for example, right? And there's one proposal, a challenge proposal, which we submitted, because sometimes you see a certain trend. Let's say very often you start as a single proposal, you submit one proposal, like Edwin, for example, right now. I, Edwin, I will take you as an example because this will be definitely be the road where you go. But as we see, Edwin has a bigger plan. He needs a team, right? What will happen now? Let's say, for example, his proposal will be voted and funded. What will happen? Edwin will build a team. And this team will recognize very fast, oh, this 50,000 for the first phase of the game, it's not enough. We need to submit a follow-up proposal, right? And then they, they see, wow, cool, the project became, the, the team becomes a whole project. It's what happens very often in Catalyst, that people come together and the single idea transforms into a whole project. And then it be, starts to become something really important over the time. Let's say, for example, the Eastern Town Hall here, right? The Eastern Town Hall started as a really small team, setting all this up, in the beginning voluntarily based, submitting the first proposals that they get paid. And then a whole team built up on the on the Eastern Town Hall, moderating, hosting, reaching out, helping people, everything. And now you have a problem because those teams are dependent on each three months fundings to provide their community services. So sometimes what we see is that projects transform into infrastructure projects. Their goal is not to develop a business model. Their goal is not to say, hey, we work with those or that. No, they work really for the community and now there's a problem because they will, and now they are on a problem that they have to provide this constant services to the community because moderating, maintaining, supporting your community is a full-time job, right? And now it's, you're really on an uncomfortable situation because you have your situation that you work full-time all the time, but that you have to rely each three months on fundings where you don't know if you actually will receive those funds, right? Because then our whole infrastructure to those people who provide direct community services, they risk now to, to run into serious sustainability issues and it creates a stress as well. If you have a team who just has a budget each time for three months and who knows, oh shit, after this three months, there are new challenges. We don't even know the challenges and we have to submit new proposals. It creates a stress on them and it's a heavy stress because you take the responsibility not only for yourself and your project, but also for the community, right? And 
for these projects, we see that really there is, wow, um, really a specific need. So what we did is a first attempt with one other project, which I created. It's the um, funded projects, ongoing operations. It's a challenge, mostly. But, uh, not, not mostly, it's a challenge proposal, which aims to allow projects which have proven themselves already over a long time frame, let's say three, six, nine months, they build already community services, community infrastructure, that they have their own challenge to simply apply for operational funds to support and sustain the core team, that they have a really good salary over a longer time frame, and they don't have to freak out and to stress each three months on submitting new proposals to provide the services to the community. Because this is something where Catalyst really is lacking. We have this three months, everybody is invited, but when your project really becomes a success, what next? What then? Edwin, maybe with you it will be the same, that you will see, oh, cool, yes, now you have full team, back and front and full stick, designer, UX and UI and everything. And then that you will see, oh, shit, but if I have to reapply each three months to build up your project, that's difficult. And what else do we have in Cardano to support projects once they emerge and grow, and grow up in Project Catalyst? And the problem is we do not really have something on place. Which means in Catalyst itself, now we try, we cry, uh, we try to create a follow-up ecosystem, which allows really projects which are well established, they are well formatted, really clear what they do, to allow them a next step and say, oh, okay, here you have some peace of mind, financial resources, which allows you to think over a longer time frame, more comfortable. That's mostly it. Sorry for taking so long, but I think it's a really important topic. Thanks for sharing. So a possible part of your team, Edwin, would be a Plutus pioneer. So Joe, are you a Plutus pioneer currently? Uh, not yet, Angela. Trying to look uh, for a way to join it as a Plutus pioneer. Okay, Kelly, uh, what was your experience as a Plutus pioneer and have you been able to join a team of any sort? Um, yeah, we lost my years, like I said, started with cohort one and then dropped off along the way because I realized I needed more. Can you hear me? We are struggling slightly. Can you come closer to the mic? Um, uh, just a second. So, how's it? Better, thanks. So, all right. So, uh, like I said, I was with cohort one when I dropped off. Because realized I had to do this on master um, uh, basics. So I signed up for Twitter's uh, premiers of three and uh, currently three quarters done. Uh, so probably in a few months uh, I'll be, I would be in a position to uh, do something fully fledged. At the same time, I'm doing some Imago, the um, uh, uh, Imago program, which is still on Kadana. So, yeah. You're also in the PPBL program, right? I helped to develop that. I'm a part of the PPBL team. Oh, interesting. At Gimbal Labs. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I follow. There's this project-based learning thing, right? Yes. Uh, we have those sessions on I think on Wednesday at five. I, I try to follow along. So, I'm, I'm, you know, trying to do. Many things are cut up uh, as quickly as I can. So, yeah, I've definitely seen you there. <laughs> um, oh, interesting. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I, I'll reach out to you. Um, so, we have the proposers. So, everyone has the ability to go and vote for these proposals and others. Uh, Felix, how many uh, proposals are there out in fund? eight this time? A little bit more than 1,200. 1,200 proposals are out. And so... And gentlemen, just to, to let you know, for example, in Fund 8, very, very same time last year, we had around 100 proposals and a total budget of 250,000. And look where we are now. So just, just amazing to see. 
So um, maybe we should go through a very basic, how many cohorts are there in one, in, in, in one year? How many, Felix, uh, please. <laughs> how many cohorts are there in a year? Do they double or do they not? <laughs> what happened, what's happening with that? And what's the progress for 2022? Last year, from 2021, there has been 200 funded projects where you have to, it's not 100% sure that 200 projects, because sometimes the projects belong sometimes to the same teams. And yeah, we, are, we uh, last year started from really small fundings to what, 250,000, each funding round doubling up to 500,000, 1 million, 2 million, 4, 8, 16. And uh, now we are on 16 million, but not doubling again. The next funding round will be something around 25 million over maybe several funding rounds. So to keep the budget large enough, but not too large for huge enterprises coming in. If you imagine we double again from 16 to 32 million to 64 million for each time, just three, three months timeframes, right? Then we would have to risk that maybe big enterprises will come in and our community projects, they would not survive against them maybe because they are not able to compete against huge enterprises and whatnot and i think what is expected is definitely much more high profile projects much more really bigger projects which go in with 150,000 budget request 1 million requests maybe and that we will have total other way also on reporting those projects right because it's one thing if a project is asking for 10K to do a project or is asking for, let's say, 800,000, right? But that's definitely something what will happen this year and that we, that we will see other kinds of project evolving as well in the ecosystem as total other budgets are available. Cool. Um, so in order to help a project get funded, everyone in the Cardano community who has 500 um, ADA is able to vote. Yes, Anne, I see a hand up. Sorry, um, I was just going to ask based on what Felix has just shared before we go into the voting process, um, what then is the future of the existing projects if they cannot grow that big. So if you had a proposal or you were hoping to keep proposing and keep hoping to win, so do those projects just sort of stall? Uh, somebody was talking in a town hall about the fact that all these projects that have been proposed are a gold mine for Cardano. So is there any thoughts around that? Or maybe we would have to think around it as a community uh, because then we are moving to now selecting the bigger guys, the bigger players. We're still moving towards that bigger player thing. And I'm not sure what happens to the smaller players, the smaller people who are trying to come in as we are trying to populate this and we're trying to stimulate this growth and ideas. Especially coming from countries like Africa, we, we really do need to be grown from grassroots and uh, we're kind of trying to do that. And it's always hard to play catch up to the first world that is so much more established. So even as we are talking about creating an equal playing field for Africans, it's still such a challenge for Africans. I am a Microsoft trainer and Microsoft turns around their innovation every three years. And I find that by the time I have brought Africans to even understand ICT to the point where they can actually consume Microsoft products, Microsoft has changed. So we can hardly keep up. We can hardly keep up with the speed of the technology, the speed of the iterations, the speed, because the first world is already established. So if there is a commitment to bringing Africa and to onboarding and to equalizing this thing, I feel very strongly that we also need to be paced so that like you can see this town hall, it's, it's quite tough to bring East Africans on board. They struggle so much with connectivity. They struggle so much with just showing up for a meeting it's not easy so i don't know um i know we are kind of like a lugging continent but i think we have such a huge human resource and we have such a huge huge amount of innovations that can come from here so i don't know when i hear about the iterations keeping moving keeping moving keeping moving i feel 
a bit anxious and worried about our future in this whole project. One thing which is happening already there, there has been the first conversation starting on with, um, in the last funding round, we had to challenge and um, accelerate uh, mentorship for Catalyst, especially with the goal really how to help young projects to build sustainability, how to get mentors and um, the, 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 uh, how do you call them again? Fuck. Yeah, uh, mentors, consultants, advisor to projects, right? And uh, the projects which have been funded there, they are in a working group together with IOG now, where they also work with entrepreneurly and seed stars, so startup consulting enterprises, where we sit all together and develop, okay, how can we provide mentorship and guidance, startup consulting, everything to these young projects and catalysts to help them really to sustain and even without need to become bigger, to maybe develop business models, to define target groups, to find additional income streams for them. So this is something what will happen a lot this year as well. There's a heavy focus also on mentor, mentoring, consulting, advising, exactly like you mentioned, if a project don't aims to become a huge player, how can we help them to survive, to make them stable and sustainable? hope it responded to your, your question. Try to keep it as short as possible. But yes, this yes is the very way. well. Thank you very much. That makes a lot of sense. I am already in an entrepreneur group mm -hmm. where that's already going on, some kind of mentorship. It's a bit challenging, but it is, it's a place to start, I suppose. Yeah. Bootcamp? Exactly. Then the uh, Bootcamp is mostly a program for funded proposal where they can apply. But also for Africa, there is a whole own mentoring program from IOG as well. Uh, what's the name again? Have to. Uh, have if to you find. manage to get a link for that, please let us know, Felix. So. Um, Thank you. We would appreciate that. Thank you. Where were we? Propose CA, VCA, <laughs> and then vote. So, in order to vote, you need to have. Okay, so the voting system works. Ooh, this is a whole topic. Am I sure I want to get into it? <laughs> to make it very short, you can make it very short. You, no. you, you have your you have your wallet. You register your wallet with a snapshot to vote, and you can vote for and against every project with the full amount of your ADA. If you register five hundred ADA, this is the minimum amount to vote. In Cardano, we have a plutocratic voting system, which means one ADA, one voting power. If you have 3,000 ADA, you have much more voting power already. And your voting power is, your, is the snapshot of your wallet. And it counts exactly the same for each of the proposals you vote for or against. So it's not that you, let's say, for example, I register 5,000 ADA to vote for. It's not that I say, okay, I vote with this 2,000 ADA for this project and 500 for this. No, it's the 5,000 ADA for each of those or against all of those. And you receive voting rewards as well. And voting rewards independent of the quantity. You just have to vote once, which ensures your voting rewards. Or you can vote 100 proposals, 100 times, but you won't receive more voting rewards. The amount is exactly the same if you vote for or against one or for or against thousand. That's voting. Thank you, Felix. So the snapshot of um, what your voting power is, is happening on the 6th of April. Please make sure that you're uh, registered and that you have your QR code saved. So when you go through the initial system, if this is your first time voting, make sure you save your QR code and your password, and then you will have the ability to vote. Have I said that clearly enough? Does anyone have a question? Uh, I do have a question now. Um, there was a time I was trying to vote and I realized someone couldn't vote with funds that were in their wallet. I don't know, has that changed or is it still the case? Sorry, I didn't hear you. Funds that were in which wallet? In a hardware wallet. Um, you, you could only vote like if your your ADA was in uh, your a soft, wallet. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, the, you know, the typical- uh, Felix. Wallet, yeah. 
And normally, yeah, the best is that you need to have a Shelly address. So Uroy, Daedalus, uh, whatnot. But you don't have to have your amounts on a hardware wallet, so like a Ledger or a Razor. I think he has his funds in a, in a hardware wallet. How does he go about voting? Ah, okay. Uh, that's up to the wallet. Let's say, for example, if you have a Ledger, uh, with Ledger, currently we build a Ledger Life integration. So uh, there you have to check and Ledger voting. Uh, this is up to the provider of Ledger to, uh, to ensure this. I'm not 100% sure if it's set up or for Ledger or Razor that you can vote with them. But uh, fuck, good question. That was the last time we tried that. Yeah, I think that was in Fund 6. What, in Fund 6, year, it wasn't probably. available. Probably. Uh, it wasn't available, but I just want to make another change, but I'll probably follow up with uh, check on the ledger or website or something. Okay. Um, I can find out and get back to you on that. Um, so then everyone who is registered to vote gets 10 days from April, sorry, one second, April 14th um to vote and you are able to vote yes and no or you're able to abstain your vote from that particular um challenge or uh, proposal um and then all the votes get calculated those who win win those who don't don't and we go on to fund nine um does anyone have any questions would you like to ask me anything So any, anyone have what? Questions. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so this is more of a general question. So supposing I wanted to have a proposal for fund nine, um, uh, I've voted, but I've not, uh, I, I do not know, does one require to have um, a particular competence in an area for that particular project that one is supposing say something like um, uh, um, if I do a proposal to do with healthcare, do I have to have that as a competency for the proposal to go through or the build of it going through? You don't necessarily, but the power uh, of our community is collaboration. And so it is expected that in your team, somebody does have that competence. And so it's highly encouraged that we, you know, wh why are we here? We're here to, one second. We are here to provide a safe and lively environment for you to explore the highest potential of human collaboration. So it's always a good idea for you to find someone else, who, to find a team. It's, a, it's, it's always better to work with a team and a good way to work with it, uh, to find a team is to uh, hang out in meetings like this and, figure out if anyone else has that sort of idea, that sort of plan. You know, you kind of come here, you pitch your idea and see if anyone wants to join you. There are several town halls. This is the Eastern town hall. There is the Western town hall that happens on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. UTC. No, 6 p.m. UTC. Um, there is LATAM, the Latin American town hall, if you're Spanish speaking or Portuguese speaking, that happens when, Felix? That happens each Thursday at 21.30 UTC. 21.30 UTC. So that doesn't really work for us in East Africa, but you it's could wake like up at 4 a.m. if you decide to. Um, there is Pacific town hall for people on the Pacific coast. There is um, Africa town hall. Is it Thursdays or Fridays? Africa Town Hall is a new format, and the sixth day is each uh, second Friday, like the Eastern Town Hall, at six PM UTC again. Yeah, and UTC. all the all the events. I just put a link here. Uh, some Catalyst War events as well, where you find a little oversight of all the events, what it is about, where you might also find the projects, and I still have to be updated and. Refreshed, but yeah, gives you a nice oversight. There are so, a bunch of, bunch of community. 
there are a bunch of community events. Um, pick the one that works for you and collaborate with the team that you find and see what happens. It's an experiment. So <laughs> uh, I would like to mention that next, next Eastern Town Hall on the 9th or Saturday, the 9th of April, 2022, we are going to be having a mini idea fest, an idea fest where you get two minutes to uh, engage with the voters. And so you're engaging with the voters and you're going to see uh, who, you know, can you, can you get some, <laughs> some votes? Uh, you'll have two minutes to present your idea and it will be right here, same time. Yes, Jackie. So, so it will be right here and uh, it will be on Eastern Town Hall at 9 a.m. UTC on the 9th of April, 2022. Uh, feel free to sign up and yes, Anne. Um, on the idea fest, we just get two minutes and that means you can only present one proposal. Um, those of us who do multiple proposals, we're not sure how to go about idea fest because then you just have to pick one of your, let's say 10 proposals and that's what you have to present. Because in the last time, the one that I really pushed did not go through and the one that I completely forgot is the one that went through. So it's not even clear what is really the value of the idea fest in terms of getting visibility and um, how does one do it if they have multiple proposals? I think that's an interesting point you're, you're mentioning because with the other idea fest, we saw exactly the same, that in the beginning, it was the idea really to help projects to receive votes for the, for the projects. But it's really extremely difficult because we see, okay, it doesn't really impact the voting results that people present. But another thing where well, it's extremely strong that you have really strong connections out of those events. Because as you have a really nice overview of what people are building on a very short time frame, and you capture a bunch of projects and you directly meet the people, is that we have really a huge, that the event failed on the voting outreach, but generated a huge impact on collaboration and networking. Collaboration. So, so I suppose that's his purpose, not so much to get votes. <laughs> I don't know. Because I don't know even how much the voters are engaged and how much the voters are able to see these projects. Well, the people but I don't who know. are in are in. Wondering. The people who are in are in. The people who will attend an idea fest will vote. Mm. It's not necessarily factual. Mm -hmm. and so one thing you can have to keep in mind as well, in Cuttles, let's say, for example, in the last funding round, we had around 800 proposals and 100 person of uh, registered votes, only 10% of the registered votes casted their votes. Means 90% of people registered the vote, but didn't vote it. Why? Very often you have to say, we here in Catalyst, we are not a lot of people, right? There may be around five, 600, across all the communities who are really in Catalyst, right? And we know about the proposals and voting and all this stuff. Now imagine somebody who has no idea about Catalyst and he wants to vote and now gets fucking smashed by 800 proposals. This fund even was 1,200 proposals, right? Those people, they register to vote, say, oh, cool, I want to vote. The problem is just the quantity makes it almost impossible for people to even find the proposals they want to vote for, right? And the people they would like to support. And this is a huge problem in Catalyst and therefore something is coming up in the very short future as well, is um, that we have delegation representatives, which means um, in, the, in Cardano, we want to build a liquid democracy. Liquid democracy is a mix between representative democracy, like in the United States, where you have the representatives, they vote for you, and, and to mix between direct democracy. Means like in Swiss, for example, 
that everybody can vote and against everything in a liquid process. So means in this regard that there will be people, everybody in the community will be able to nominate himself to be a voting representative. Means other people, because for them, it's far too much to know about all the stuff. But there are some people who know really well about the stuff because they are very deep in catalysts and very deep to their communities as well. Those people will have the possibility to receive the voting power of the people who believe in their in their delegation representatives. And this person then makes or casts the votes for the people who give this person their, their voting power. This is not obligatory. The voter can do this. He can also vote to everything by himself, right? So it's just an addition and the service, which is really important in liquid democracy to provide, to offer the community the possibility to do both. Once, give your voting power to an expert, for example, to a domain expert. For example, me, I can vote for against any projects, but I'm not a developer. So for apps and apps and integrations, for example, I don't even vote for them, right? Because I don't know if the projects are really feasible do I have to check the code and the GitHub repositories and all the stuff? That's not my field, right? So with voting delegation, it would also be possible that I say, okay, I vote with a certain amount myself, but for somebody I know who's really strong in, in the tech side, and he's a voting representative that I will give him a certain amount of my votes. And I know, oh, okay, this person will make a right decision or a good decision. But anyway, yeah, to, because it's not, you know, we don't want like a competition about visibility, who is the best in marketing to promote their projects. We want to define which are the best and the most impactful projects. So if it would all run down only on marketing and PR to decide which projects we fund, well, we will fund very shitty projects with uh, which just hired and uh, um, marketing and PR companies to boost their shit like hell, right? <laughs> but we'll get nothing out of it. We want experts who are able to identify which are really impact projects, which are really important, and vote for those as the most of the people we can't even expect from them to know about 1,200 proposals. Nobody does, right? Thanks, Felix. And you're talking about the DREP idea, right? Exactly. So if you see people talking about DREPs, this is exactly what Felix has just summarized. Um, uh yeah so do we have any other questions is there anything anyone would like to clarify okay i have well, a question to you angela yes how long is it now that you are in the ecosystem in catalyst I'll turn one in May. You see? It's a while already. What would you, because here are some people who just joined, right? What would you give those people as advice after, let's say, looking back on almost one year? Ooh, well, I know what I was looking for. I was looking for an opportunity to make money. I was looking for an opportunity to change the world. I was looking for an opportunity to make an impact in Africa. And I just clicked on a link and I followed the link and the link led to another link and the link led to another link. And all of a sudden I was on <laughs> in meetings with brilliant, brilliant, brilliant minds. And I think it's such a value to hang around smart people. Uh, they will build you in ways you don't even expect to be built. And so I've been through a huge amount of growth in the last year. Uh, my coding skills have increased exponentially from <laughs> where they were, uh, which wasn't too bad, but it wasn't too good either. <laughs> and I've managed to meet people from all over the world and expand my um, sense of who I know. You know, Felix is sitting in France right now. In Foix, I've never been to Foix. <laughs> so 
uh, it's it's it's. I a, call it foie. Is it foie or foie? <laughs> it's foie. It is oh, not for eczema. <laughs> ah, we'll laugh about that later. So, <laughs> um, if you are in a position where you do have a couple hours a week, this is a good place to spend your time because they're not joking about changing lives and they're not joking about making an impact. They have made an impact in my life. And I would strongly advise anyone who's made it to this meeting to make it to another one. <laughs> uh, but walk slowly and follow what attracts your light. If, if you feel interested in something, walk towards that calling. And if you see a certain group of people talk about a certain thing and you're like, ooh, what's a DRAP? Ooh, that sounds interesting. What is governance? What is, you know, any of it? And so, I would strongly encourage all, all of you to hang around. I would strongly encourage you uh, to be here next time, next Saturday, and wonder about, see what you find, see, see, see what happens. It's an experiment. <laughs> and so it will stress you out sometimes, but it's a, it's a good place to be. Thank you so much for attending Eastern Town Hall, the, it turns out, kind of English-speaking East Africans room <laughs> this time. Uh, there will be a recording of this and the other sessions up on YouTube. Uh, feel free to follow us there. And for your information, for your information, Felix, East African Africans are not the boisterous ones. They are not the West Africans ones. They are more quiet, reserved. So don't be surprised by, by the silence in the room. That's just how we are. We are, we are more silent than the other Africans. The other Africans, well, okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice to know. Thanks, Anne. Yeah, in case you're wondering. Um, yeah, if, you, if you're looking for the hype, the, the West Africans meet on Fridays. So see ya. <laughs> Bye, thank you so much for coming. And lovely weekend, everyone. Thank you, Angela. <laughs> Thank you, Angela.